All right, look, right here, 3 minus 6i. This is number 3. Okay. So like we said, this negative gets distributed. Negative 3 minus 6i plus, uh, plus 7. And then we combine our like terms. Yeah. So 3 and 7 are my like terms. That's yeah. 10. Yeah, it's be negative 8i. Negative 8i. Perfect. Okay, let's look at number 4. So, number four is three plus three i plus negative one plus six i. So, what do I notice? There is no negative that's got to get distributed through. All right, so just take care of your like terms. Three and negative one. What's three plus negative one? Just two. And then what's 3 plus 6? So your answer is just 2 plus 9i for that one. So on 5, you're multiplying. So you got to do the whole foil thing like we used to do. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times negative 5i is negative 10i. Then we take 5 times 2, which is 10i. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25i squared. Okay? So I notice I got like terms in the middle. My like terms here, negative 10 and positive 10, they cancel each other out. So I end up with 4 minus 25i squared. And if y'all remember, 25, all right, this i squared, i squared is actually the same as negative 1, right? So this is like saying 4 minus 25 times negative 1. So that turns into 4 plus 25, which is 29. So that answer should be 29. Okay, let's look at 6. Oops. All right, here's 6. You got 5 over 3 plus 6i. All right. So, if you guys remember when we had division of these complex numbers, what we ended up having to do is we had to multiply by... Uh, what was called the conjugate of this, which is the opposite. So we got 3 minus 6i and 3 minus 6i. Okay. So how does that help me out? Well, that's going to get, just like the problem we did before, it's going to get the middle parts to cancel. So this is 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times negative 6 is negative 30i. All right, all over, doing the same process. Three times three is nine. Three times negative six cancels out with three times positive six. So really all you gotta worry about is six times negative six, which is negative 36 I squared. But didn't we talk about how I squared is really a negative one? Yeah. So this is like 36 times negative one. So negative 36 times negative 1 is a positive 36. So this is 15 minus 30i, 9 plus 36. Okay, can't you do 9 plus 36? What was that, 45? So 15 minus 30i over 45 would be that answer. That one would be good to go. That one's done. Okay. All right, so I'm doing one like uh, like number seven. I'm about to skip a couple. Uh, this says the fourth root of 96. Okay, these we're actually going to be able to put in the calculator. Uh, the one on the test will be a cube root of something. 
So if we do the cube root of, say, 81, all right, this means some number times itself three times is equal to 81. This one over here means some number times itself four times is equal to 96. All right, what you can do is you can actually put these in the calculator. There's a little button on there that says something like that. And I could put three root of 81. And what, uh, what you can actually do, let's see what that is, all right? When we put that in the calculator, it's going to give me a nasty decimal. So this is actually going to help you a lot for your exam. What I can think about, if I do 81, all right, and I divide it by, let's see, 81 divided by 3, this means the cubed root of 27 times the cube root of 3, because 27 times 3 is 81. Okay. Now, we can take the cube root of 27. All right, cube root of 27 is just 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. All right, and this is the cube root of 3 again. So that would just be your answer. Your cube root of 27 is actually just 3. All right. Let's look at, um, this is one like number 11. So I'm skipping some on the study guide. So this is negative root 2 minus square root of 18 Oops. minus 2 root 2 minus the square root of 8. Okay. So what I've got to do is I'm trying to get everything in terms of uh, the same root, okay? So what do I notice about 18? Y'all know that you have like 9 times 2 is equal to 18? Yeah. So you got negative root 2 minus, you got the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, which is 18, minus 2 root 2, all right? And then minus, what can you break 8 down to be? Four and two, right? So this is square root of four times square root of two. Okay. So a little bit more simplification. You know what the square root of nine goes to be, and you know what the square root of four goes to be. So what's the square root of nine? It's just three. So this is negative root two minus 3 root 2, minus 2 root 2, minus the square root of 4 is 2 root 2. So now I have a whole bunch of stuff that's got the same thing on the end. I got one negative 1 root 2, minus 3 root 2, minus 2 root 2, minus 2 root 2. So all this is just like terms. So if I take negative 1 minus 3, that's negative 4. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 minus 2. This is negative 8 root 2. So it's almost like saying negative x minus 3x minus 2x minus 2x. That would be negative 8x, right? Just our x happens to be square root of 2. Okay? Let's look on to... Um, this says we got to find the, the zeros of something. So let's look at number 12. Excuse me, number 13. 
All right, 13 says solve by using the quadratic formula. So we're trying to find those zeros of this function. All right, we got to use the quadratic formula. So you can always find the zeros by using the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. So what is the quadratic formula? You got to know negative b. Or, um, it's negative b. Excuse me. Plus or minus the square root. B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So y'all had notes on this one day uh, that we took up for a quiz grade on the quadratic formula. So you got to know what, what your A, B, and C values are. Correct? So what's our A value here? What's the number that comes first? 12. That's A. So what's B? Eight. Negative 8. And C is 4. So now all we're doing is plugging all this stuff in. Okay. So if I take negative B, B's already negative. So what happens when you make two negatives? It becomes a positive 8 plus or minus. All right, you got B squared. So what if you take negative 8 times negative 8? And that's 64. You got minus 4 times A, which is 12, times C, which is 4, all over. 2 times A, so all over 2 times 12. Okay, now it just turns into simplifying. So I got to take uh, 64 times, Let's see, 64 minus, sorry, 4 times 12 is 48 times 4. So this gives me 8 plus or minus 64 minus 192 all over 24. So then we got to take 64 minus 192, which is negative 128. So I got 8 plus or minus uh, square root of negative 128 all over 24. Bless you. All right. And what we got to do here is 128 is actually 64 times 2. So this is 8 plus or minus. You got negative uh, 64 times the square root of 2. And I just got that from uh, really looking at, I just took 128 and started dividing it by stuff that I knew had a good square root. And 64 was one of those. You could use 49. 36, 9, 25, numbers like that. All right, lastly, so remember, you can't have negative square roots. That's where those i's come from. So the square root of negative 1 is i. So if we have the square root of negative 64, all right, that becomes 8 plus or minus negative 64 square root is 8i. We still have times the root 2. All right, we're still over 24. Okay, and I'll let y'all leave it like that. Yeah. Sounds pretty, pretty involved. Pretty involved problem. Okay, now let's look at uh, find the zeros. Okay, so if I find the zeros of a of a function, uh, this would be like. Let me see. 
kind of like number 80. All right, it says x squared minus 6x minus 16. All right, if we find the zeros for this, remember you're just factoring this. So what is this factor to be? You got negative 16. What multiplies to give you negative 16? 8 and 2, eight. right? Negative 8 and positive 2. So my factors are x minus 8 and x plus 2. Okay, all that equals 0. So what are my zeros? It's the numbers that make that equal to 0. So if y'all just remember, when you have this stuff in parentheses, all you do is it's just positive 8 and negative 2 are your zeros. That's it. Okay, how about, let's see, 81? 6x squared plus x minus 12. So it's kind of the same, same kind of problem. So now we got to take, take into account the 6 in the very beginning. So i got to multiply this 6 by 12. So what's 6 times 12? What is that, 70, 72? So we're going to change this into be x squared plus x minus 72. Now we're going to think about this problem the same way. All right, so what, uh, what multiplies to give me negative 72? That will also, nine times eight. yeah, 9 times 8. Which one needs to be positive to give me a positive 1 here? The 9 needs to be positive. 8 needs to be negative, right? Okay, so this happens to go to x plus 9 and x minus 8. Okay, now that would be simple. Except we multiplied by six at the very beginning, so we gotta we gotta undo that somehow. So how do you undo by multiplying by six? Divide. All right, I can divide by six. Okay. What does that simplify to be? What's nine over six simplify to be? What does nine over six simplify? You can divide by three on both sides. Yeah. So you get three over. 2, and then 8 over 6, negative 8 over 6, what does that divide? 4, four, over, three. four over 3. All right, so because we don't want to say x plus 3 over 2, all right, I don't like having fractions in there, and x minus 4 over 3, all right, what you do is you take the number in the bottom, and you put it by the x. So that becomes 2x plus 3, and this becomes 3x minus 4. And that's it. Okay, we've got that one factored. Okay. Are you good with that?